So this video, what we're going to be doing is shooting into a process where I'm going to encourage you to think about what it is that you want exactly. What exactly do you want as far as money? What exactly do you want as far as social success or dating success or as networking success or friendship success, relationship success? What exactly is it that you want as far as your health and vitality? What exactly is it that you want as far as where you want to travel in the world or the kind of city that you want to live in or places that you want to go? What exactly do you want out of life? Now, the reason that I'm going to encourage you to go through this process is because unless you know specifically what it is that you want, you're not going to know what it is that you're shooting for. But also, the other problem is that you've also got to begin to look at what it is that you're doing now and see what trajectory it is that you're on. And what you're going to find is that you're rarely on a trajectory to going anywhere very quick. And you'll notice this almost everybody who you know who rarely accomplishes anything and rarely gets what they want out of life and later gets older and they have to rationalize it. So if you don't want to become one of these people who just gets older and then says, you know what, really it didn't matter that much anyway, it's just all about the walks with your dog, which like, hey, that's amazing. But if you, if you want to you know, not do that because you had no other choice and had to rationalize it, well then what I want you to do is just kind of go through this content right now and it's going to change your life. This video is actually the second preview, by the way, in a video series that we're doing on the topic of Endless Motivation, which is a new program that I've just come out with. Click the link below. This is a preview for it. And what you're going to find if you actually master this topic of Endless Motivation is how to take effortless action towards your goals to where whatever it is that you want to do, you just go and do it. Okay? I, you probably watched me do this over many, many years or whenever I have a specific skill that is that I want to build, I just go out relentlessly and build it and build it and build it. I built an eight-figure business by understanding these basic skills. I wound up traveling the world through the, these basic skills. I wound up having some of the best parties in Los Angeles. I was actually competing with Hugh Hefner for best parties in all of Los Angeles for a period of time. These were about half a million to a million dollars per party. Whatever it is that you set your mind to, you can do it, but you have to know how. And I spent years and years and years studying this and coaching some of the wealthy people in the world. And in the program Endless Motivation, I'm going to show you how to take that effortless action. By the way, kind of side point here, with artificial intelligence coming out, we're about to get dominated pretty bad. And I want to show you how to be somebody who's a total executor and who knows how to think creatively and outside the box to get what it is that you want. So if you want to take the program Endless Motivation, click the link below. We're going right now into the second preview about getting specific about what you want. Let's do it. I want you to look at your core main areas and get even more drilled down and in depth about what it is that you're trying to build. So those couple core areas are going to be the following. First one is money. So let's get you to knock down what it is that you want to make. Okay, write this down. So money, put it in your phone, paper, I don't care where. First one is money. We're going to get specific about this. Now what I want you to do is I want you to give some kind of a calculation on how much money it is that you want to make and why. I don't want, again, none of this garbage, gazillion dollars, it's just a bunch of stupidity, okay? It means that you're a child. So instead, start getting some kind of calculation of what it is, where do you want to live? What do you, you know, how much do you want to have for your children? What is it, what is a, what is a child's school cost to go to if you want to have kids? What does it cost to eat out at nice places? What does it cost to go on certain vacations? What does it cost to go to certain educational trainings? What does it cost for you to go to sports events? Things like that. Anything that it is that you want to go and do, okay? What hobbies you have, camping gear, you know, whatever it is. Start writing out whatever it is that you think that you actually want, okay? Things that would make you genuinely happy. Start writing that out. What it costs to live in various neighborhoods, what food costs, could be organic foods, could be supplements, could be whatever, but start writing, start nailing that down in a significant way. Nail that down. That's your money section. Maybe charity that you want to give away. Nail down whatever it is that you're trying to actually get to financially. Then what I want you to do is I want you to talk socially about what it is that you're trying to do. And what I also want you to do is, you know, you could be a young person who maybe wants to date and then eventually you want to settle in with somebody and have children. Could be that you want to date the rest of your life. Could be that you'd like to avoid dating and meet the right person sooner, but in reality, you're rarely going to be able to skip that step, but you never know. It can land on your lap. You just never know. Um, it could also be the kind of social life that you want to have. Do you want to be able to do parties? Uh, do you want to be able to hang out with friends? What exactly is it that you want that to look like? So start nailing that down as well. Okay? How confident do you want to be? How much social skill do you want to have? Another one that I want you to write down is fitness, vitality, and nutrition. What kind of shape do you want to be in? And by the way, you're going to see that you, that often gets sacrificed. Okay. A lot of time you're, you're building a business, grinding, stressing, you get out of shape. I've had periods of my life that I've was, I never miss a day in the gym for over a decade. I've been in the gym in a long time now. 
You know, so it's one of those things. It's gonna, gonna kind of come in and out. If it's a quick one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you said about money. Are you talking about like within the, the year or like just in general, like how much? You're in, in the longer term and say the next, um, that's a great question. Um, what you like to make this year, but also what you like to make in five or 10 years, kind of like where you want to kind of land yeah. is more what I'm saying, okay? Where you want to land. Um, but also in terms of your fitness, in terms of your nutrition, in terms of your vitality, you know, I was able to prioritize vitality. I've been sick in a decade, not even in a decade. All this crazy stuff happening in recent years, I breezed through it. <laughs> I found it funny. You know, I feel bad for other people, but just personally. So things like vitality, um, you know, the kind of nutrition that you want to put in yourself. Things like anti-aging. What kind of anti-aging things you might want? Do you want to have a sauna? Do you want to have a cold plunge? I own a sauna cold plunge. You know, things like that. So, you know, do you want to be able to get a chiropractor? Do you want to be able to get a masseuse? Do you want to be able to, um, you know, have consultants or a private trainer or things like that? So start, you know, start knocking down these different things as well, okay? Just start knocking these down, start thinking about this stuff. And this stuff is both a goal, but it also has financial requirements to be able to get this stuff. So start knocking that down. Another one that I'd like you to look at is your own inner practices. So, so write that down as well. What do you want your inner map or inner landscape to look at? You got to start knocking this down. And, you know, a lot of this, in my view, is a combination of healing trauma, but it's also things like getting into a better mood and establishing yourself in that better mood regularly would be another really, really big one. So what does it mean for you to actually cultivate and curate your general mood? What does that actually mean? That's a very, very big deal. What does it mean to curate and to cultivate your mood? Um, you have to do that with intention. What do you want your belief system to look like? You have to cultivate and curate your belief system. You have to, you have to consciously curate the books that you've read, your education level. Um, you have to also be looking at your paradigm. Um, some people call that raising your vibration, right? You don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. Uh, you know, where do you vibrate at? Do you want to vibrate at a high level or a low level, right? There's books about this, spiritual books, new age books. It could be something more like a traditional religion. It could be something like reading the Bible or it could be something like reading the Quran, but whatever that is for you. How much time do you have for that to actually curate what's going on inside of yourself? Okay, it could be releasing trauma. It could be, you know, seeing, seeing a, a mental health professional, whatever that is. But I'd like you to start thinking a little bit about that and how you want that to look as well. Okay, this is like a really, really, really big one. Okay, now the other one and I'm just gonna put this down to life experiences. So start writing this down. What are some different life experiences that you wanna have specifically? Um, that, you know, for me, uh, I went skiing on almost every major ski hill in all of uh, America this year. That was super crazy. I managed to blow out my ACL. I have a bit of a limp now, <laughs> walking like a pimp. But, you know, I, I managed to blow my ACL out, um, even though I'm, you know, I'm walking well now, but I'll probably have to do surgery on it. It's gonna be this whole process. But basically, I'll get a lot of editing done. <laughs> I got a big backlog editing, I'll get it done. But what I say to you is, how would you like to, um, what adventures do you wanna have? You know, for me, for example, um, I wanna go to Alaska. Um, I'd like to actually do some real, uh, like, you know, fly in on a seaplane to place like Gates of the Arctic. I'd like to go, you know, spend like a month out there with grizzly bears and, you know, to be trained on that, uh, to have guys, professional guides. Um, I did some whitewater rafting in Montana this year. I'd like to actually be able to, you know, do some better whitewater rafting with like a private guide, uh, ideally with guns, because there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> mountain lions and uh, I, I'm not sure if mountain lions in Montana probably are. There's some other place that I go. Uh, there's definitely grizzly bear everywhere, you know, things like that. I'm not qualified to go do something that safely on my own. I was hiking in Glacier uh, earlier this year and a grizzly bear just walked by, <laughs> you know, stared me in the eye. So. You know, it's one of these things where, you know, and what bothered me about that wasn't that I'm afraid, but rather that I felt ill-prepared. I felt stupid. You know, I've got kids. I shouldn't be out there getting, you know, mauled by some grizzly bear when I'm unprepared. Uh, that's a risk that I'm willing to take if I understand it and if I'm well-prepared. I did have bear spray, but I've never even shot off the can of bear spray. And that was just stupid. Even me blowing out my ACL this year, it was my first year back skiing. I was very delusional. I went down a double black. I shouldn't have done that. You know, it was just unnecessary for this to happen. So it's also, you know, adventures, but also preparing yourself for different adventures. But what are some adventures that you might have? You know, maybe you want to follow me around on every event that I ever do this year. Maybe you want to go fall, you know, go to uh, Electronic Daisy Carnival in Vegas or go to Burning Man. Or maybe you want to, um, uh, you know, learn how to fly airplanes or things like that, right? But what are the things, and this is the big one, 
What are the things for you that are not just about you kind of building this sort of video game character where you're like, well, I have this much money and I'm in this shape and I'm this popular and I have this many social media followers, but I'd like you to write down some things that are just for you. They're not for anybody else other than for you. Not for your kids, future children, not for anyone, but just for you. And by the way, in truth, this is something where you're receiving and giving to yourself, which really allows you to give more to other people anyway. So it's one of those things where even though it's for you, it really is also for others at the same time. But I need you to start getting very, very specific on this. And the way that you want to think about this is that the more that you're sort of keeping this list, maybe you have it at home on a laptop, but the more that you have this, the more that you know what it is that you're striking at, the more that you know what it is that you're going for. Because understand that you are basically being put into this kind of derpish haze by the food that's in front of your face, by the entertainment that's being shoved down your throat. You're basically being fed this gruel. Say the word gruel. Okay, it's gruel. It's this gruel entertainment, gruel food, gruel paradise, victim thinking, low vibration thoughts, self-attack, feeling like you're not enough, comparing yourself to other people, stimulus spiking entertainment that depletes your attention span, completely taking you out of any reality that you could actually get what you want out of life. I mean, it is really, 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 really brutal um, when you don't have this down, okay? And the problem is, is that what, this is, what we're talking about here in this seminar, this should be what everybody's talking about all the time. It should basically just be this and clowning, <laughs> you know? So if you see me, Okay, you're either gonna see me like this or you're gonna see me being hella funny. Okay, so I'm either, I'm either rolling over, crying, laughing, or I'm hooking up with someone I'm very attracted to, or I'm at a nice spa, or I'm on a nice vacation, or I'm thinking about this. But I'm not sitting there just eating gruel, okay, just poop eating all this crap. I have complete and utter horse blinders on. Anything other than where I'm trying to get to, I can't be bothered. And I'll get into why this is later, but just to hint at it, I really believe that life could be amazing. But I believe that if we let in negative influences, uh, attention span depleting media, low level paradigms, victim thinking, believing that we're at the effect, and if we don't take ownership of it, we basically wind up as a battery in the matrix. And I could, I mean, Talk about a seminar. I mean, I should just give the battery the matrix seminar, but I would just show the way, like, I mean, you're basically just like this pin cushion, just being pumped in every direction that you, pumped in every orifice and every hole and holes that you don't even have. Like you're, you're basically just like, ah! like just like literally, you know, every hole that you don't even have. And it's, uh, it's a very, very deep topic, but it's almost like in nature, how all the fish, like if you look at an ocean documentary, all the fish are trying to eat the other fish. You know, the fish are trying to eat the plankton, the, the, you know, that, whatever other fish is trying to eat that fish, is trying to eat that fish, is trying to eat that fish, is trying to eat that fish. There's even fish that can eat the rocks. I've seen this on some uh, nature documentary. There's like lava at the bottom of the ocean, like way down. And there's like some kind of thing that's evolved to even eat that stuff. I'm not even clear on how that works or what that would involve, but it's pretty awesome. And in the same way you look on land, I've, I've actually been on safari in South Africa, and you know, you'll see animals, just everything's eating everything else. This is eating, 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 this. You know, even the plants, guys, you know, these harmless little plants, many of them have anti-nutrients and little spikes in them, and they're competing with each other, and the roots are fighting, and all this stuff. It's totally insane, okay? And that's the world that you actually live in. It is very, very questionable if we're not in some kind of purgatory realm right now. You're afraid of going to hell? <laughs> Welcome to the world where everything is eating everything else and then you die, okay? <laughs> so I believe we can build a heaven on earth and hell on earth, and I believe it can very quickly become a low-level purgatory, if not hell, if you're not careful. Okay, so there's many, many things that are looking to grab your time, grab your focus, grab your momentum, grab your energy, things that are built to derail you. And so if you're not having these kind of conversations and if this kind of, this kind of ideology and focus doesn't mean it has to be me, but if you don't have something like what it is that we're doing here up in your face all the time, then what winds up happening is your attention, focus, time, energy, momentum, consistency keeps getting broken down. And then instead of your life uh, looking amazing, Okay, looking, and I'll give you examples of that. Looking amazing, you wind up, in effect, living a life through a computer screen. Your life winds up being lived digitally, where you will get to a point where you are living your entire life basically frequenting fast food chains or restaurant chains, largely, um, watching things on social media and pumping money 
into the hands of big tech and big media and so on and so forth. Um, very likely getting sick at some point and pumping money into the hands of big pharma. Probably taking a very conventional life path and you know, pumping money in the hands of big education, which I do think can be very, very useful in many cases in certain life paths like doctor, lawyer, uh, accountant, things like that. But it can also be something where it was the wrong path because it burned down opportunity costs of other things you could have learned or gave you a limited concept. And there's all sorts of challenges in the education system. But basically, take any major industry that you can think of and you basically just become this, this sort of like source of this sort of battery in the matrix that is just like your thought capital and your movements, like the thoughts that you think and the movements that you make and your life's energy just winds up feeding into that. And it's, 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 a, it's a good system in many ways because the system supports a great opportunity, but it's also a sick system. And you will wind up defaulting to just that, okay? Um, one thing that I actually recommend to everybody is to just drive the entire country. Just drive the entire country and, you know, start, and, and do it as cheaply as you can if you can't afford it, but drive the whole country. And I say that because I believe what that does is it starts to break you out of the digital trance. It, it breaks you out of living you know, through a sports team that you're following, even though that could be a lot of fun, but you know, a sports team that you're following or social media that you're following. It, it gets it to where it, it's almost like so real that it starts to wake you up and you don't resonate with that paradigm anymore. So anything that is paradigm breaking should give that feeling. Let me ask you a question. For any of you in this room who's never met me before, does it feel a little bit weird to be meeting me right now? Who here has never met me before? Put your hand up. Never met me in a row. How does it feel seeing me up here cranking this out instead of watching from home? Is it different? Oh, yeah. How different is it? How different? Louder. It, it, does it have a weird feeling to it? It's like reality is kicking in, right? For example, I'm not on speakers right now. I have mics on going to the camera. Just my voice right now. They don't hear that at home. The mic caps this, but they don't hear that at home. You're seeing something real right now as opposed to just staring into a screen. So think of the feeling that you get just being here. If you drive the country, you're gonna get that feeling 24 hours a day basically for a year. You know, like the feeling that you have right now of like, wow, like we're getting into real life, you'll start to feel that way. And then you're not gonna resonate anymore with just, you know, living life through this digital screen. And be, because unfortunately what winds up happening is our life can get to a point where we feel this kind of permanent refrigerator hum of ill ease all the time. And we don't even really know what happiness is. And so you wake up and all that you're thinking is, how do I get relief? Like I'm hungry. Maybe I want a donut. Maybe I want some caffeine, but the donut is making you tired. And then you need the caffeine to counteract the tiredness. You've already slept, you know, in a place with artificial lights all over the place. And you went to bed too late and you're looking at the screen too late and there's probably noise, so now you sleep poorly, you probably ate bad food so you have low energy, then you take a stimulant to give yourself energy, and then what happens is now you're feeling this kind of permanent ill ease, so then now you're looking for anything that will sort of take away the pain, you don't, you, you don't have enough energy or focus to really build anything of significance, so now you're working a job that somebody else has created, it's real honest work, they gave you a job, I give people jobs, I don't think that should be viewed as having an ill intention, but it might not be necessarily what you want, then you go do that, the job is soul sucking, same commute, same job, probably isn't using your creativity. You come home, you're tired. Last thing you wanna go do is go build something. Darn it, you deserve a break. You've earned it. You, just, you kinda deserve it. It, it. It's pretty harsh and cruel to say, now you've just gotta go into building your business or something. That's vicious, brutally, brutally vicious. You might have two, three hours of extra time. And if you actually do the math on that, it's very, very painful because you've gotta choose between, are you gonna read a book? Are you gonna meditate? Are you gonna to go to the gym? Are you gonna build your business? Where are you gonna get the time for all this self-help journey? You know, and you can see why people are stuck. Add to that that you might have kids at some point. Now you've got kids that you're raising. They need your time, they need your focus, they need your energy. And you're stuck in it. You're basically stuck in like a, in a headlock. You're stuck in a headlock with some big, big person that you don't even know how to get out of. Like this person's five times your size, has you locked in here and you're just like, ah, you know, right? Please let me out. Nope, you're not getting out, okay? And you can paint yourself into a corner like that very, very quickly and be stuck. Does anybody here resonate with that right now? You feel like you're kind of stuck in that headlock right now? Okay, and any of you that aren't, I'm happy for you. But it's, it's tough, okay? Even in entrepreneurship, you can get yourself stuck. There's just like levels to the headlock, guys. There's levels to this game, levels to the headlock. So that can really start to happen. And if you're not careful, life will get away from you and it can get really, really crappy. And what happens is that you're literally just living in a permanent coping pattern for the rest of your life. 
So the only way out that I'm aware of is you've got to be starting to knock down uh, these ideas. You've got to start every single day, if you can, looking at what it is that you're trying to build and continually backwards engineering what you want that to look like. You know, so for example, let me give you a quick example, then we're going to go on the exercise. Um, this year, I skied every major ski resort, or almost every major ski resort. Probably would have got almost like just about the last few that I missed, but I popped my ACL towards the end of the season. I also went to almost every major national park by car for most of them. And I shot videos in all of them that are not out yet. And I uh, pushed my content to the highest levels that I ever got it to. And I um, really, really lived life. Like I just went out and I had a ton of real life expanding experiences. I see the world in a different way. I've had my ups, I've had my downs, but I pushed myself to do that. And to do this, I was also in a headlock, in an incredible headlock. I have expenses, I have obligations, I have kids, I have due dates, all sorts of things that I have that are very, very tough for me to be able to do that. And the way that I did this was I got to the point that I laid out what it was that I wanted to do and I laid out my whole wish list. Then what I started doing was calculating like, okay, if I do this many things, how long does it take to drive to this place? How much time do I want there? And, and like, simple example, I look at a state like, say, Oregon, okay, Oregon State. Very, very difficult to find information about a place like New Mexico or Maine or Oregon. But I want to see the main sites and the, and the main highlights in these states. So now what I've got to do is I've got to sit there for many hours and I've got to watch YouTube videos. I've got to watch social media videos about these states. But remember, these are not created by professionals. And frankly, the ones created by professionals are actually worse because usually by people that never went there. So these are created by individuals. So now I've got to go watch 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 different videos on Oregon. And there's not a ton of videos on Oregon. Has anybody here ever heard of Crater Lake? Has anybody here ever heard of uh, Tomalik Blue Pool? Has anybody here ever heard of um, uh, Eagle Creek Hiking Trails or Multnomah Falls? Has anybody here ever heard of um, you know, the, you know, Cannon Beach or the Oregon Coast? Um, that would be in something like Oregon. In Maine, who here has ever heard of Kenny Bunkport? Who here has ever heard of Acadia Park or things like that? In a place like, say, New Mexico, who here has ever heard of Shiprock? Who here has ever heard of the fact that Chaco Canyon is like an ancient, or maybe not ancient, but very, very, you know, thousands of years old, um, you know, ancient ruin or things like that, right? Or that uh, Carlsbad Cavern is one of the most beautiful caves in the world that you can go see in New Mexico. These were things that I wanted to see, but I had to find them. Then I have to actually map out how, what kind of route do I want to take? You know, so say I'm looking at New Mexico. I pick 20 different things that I want to see. Then I, then I write them all out. Then I put them into Google Maps. Then the map looks all cross-eyed and stuff. Then I have to kind of figure out, well, how would I make the map like a direct line? How long would I need in between each? Where's the places that I would stay? Um, how long do I need at each location? I've got to go into a search engine and say, how long do you need at Chaco Canyon? How long do you need at Carlsbad Cavern? How long do you need at Ship Rock? It turns out that Ship Rock you need, to, you need some kind of a Jeep to really drive around properly on it. You know, so now you've got to rent the right vehicle for it. Uh, do I need to bring food there? Where's the nearest food? How much your hotel is? Where's the nearest hotel? You know, these are things that I'm having to map out. In addition, I'm having to map out how much revenue does my business need in order for it to succeed while I'm gone? What are, what are different promotions that are going out while I'm gone? How will this impact um, you know, my release schedule on social media? How will this impact my team while I'm gone? Um, you know, can I afford to do this? Not that I can't, but in the sense of me being gone, um, maybe the ship's going off the rails. To what extent will the ship go off the rails? What will I do if things get messed up? Um, can I get my kids out of school? Can my children come with me? What will be involved in this? What kind of staff members do I need? What kind of, what, what do we need to shoot? What does the weather look like? What is the possibility of range of weather? Could it be wet? Could it be dry? Do I need to have warm clothes, cold clothes? What kind of hiking boots do I need? What kind of hike am I gonna take while I'm there? You know, and I did all this. Like I, I, I basically saw the entire country by doing all this. And I did this um, after running for many years an eight figure business and then COVID came in, COVID. And then what happened was I, um, I said to myself, you know what? Even though we're actually shrinking the business, I just wanna go do this now anyway. I'm just like, I'm gonna go do this now anyway. So I went and I did it. And then I did the exact same thing with skiing and figured out where every major ski hill was and figured out where I would stay and how I would drive there because I want to drive and see the country. This is all a lot of logistics, a lot of organization, a lot of time management, a lot of allocation of resources, but you're completely capable of doing it. You are. And it's one of these things where in a weird way, actually going out there and seeing what would be involved in doing what it is that you want to do is it's actually more complicated than you think. Like you're thinking, when I get all this money, then I'm gonna start doing all the stuff that I wanna do. The only way that that's real is if you 
Um, build a business, and for, for those of you that don't have uh, you know, money from your parents, is basically building a business and selling it and then having all the time that you want. But let me give you a little tip on that. Who do you think a lot of my clients are? People that ran big tent companies and sold them, people who ran huge businesses and sold them, and these are usually the most unhappy people of anybody. So that didn't even make them happy because they have too much free time. It's actually better to go work for it and then you know, create the space in between and then you actually wind up enjoying it. There was people that I brought on these trips that didn't put in any work and didn't spend any money to be there and they would be whining and crying and complaining on the trip because it's exactly what I told you about earlier. Actually having a goal and a hustle actually helps keep those demons out of your mind, right? What do they say? It's the uh, empty mind is the devil's playground or something like that. What's the exact expression? Idle time. The idle, the idle mind is the devil's playground. Idle time is the devil's playground. Whatever the case, right? So going from that standpoint, this is a lot of logistics. This is a lot of organization. This is a lot of time management. And what is the end outcome of this? The end outcome of this is that you don't wind up living a digital life you don't wind up living as a battery in the matrix and you don't wind up just straight poisoned by the system itself. And there's a lot of huge advantages to this. Again, I'm going to talk about this later. I'm just laying this out now. But what I'm saying to you is when you see people, for example, gossiping online or you see people that are trash talking each other or you see people that are, you know, stuck in their ego or stuck in, in, in what people are saying about them or stuck in crap. Like when you see things like TMZ and I think TMZ is a, Great business, you know, I'm not, I'm not criticizing it. But, you know, it, it serves a need and that's fine. Maybe you'll build something like that. But when you see these things, what are these things fundamentally designed to do? They're designed to suck away opportunity costs from what it is that I'm talking about here. Which this here, what we're talking about is a process of auditing what your assets are, auditing where your strengths are, auditing what lanes you have, auditing what different advantages you have, auditing directions that you could take. You're basically looking for little cracks in the door. You know, you're looking for little lanes, little cracks in the door, little areas that you could explore. Then actually building skill sets in this, actually building something where you can add value in this. But it doesn't just stop with you making cash because there's many different, the cash is just the beginning. Then you've got to look at your, at your social life, your family life, your happiness, your experiences in life, how you're organizing all this. It's a whole entire process that you've got to think about. And by the way, what I'm hoping that you're getting out of this so far, we're just getting started by the way, this is like just, we're scratching the surface. What I hope that you're getting out of this so far is again, that effect of a cold bucket of water on the head. I hope that you're feeling for most of you, for about 80% of you or more in this room, I hope that what you're feeling is like a big giant bucket of cold water just being viciously dumped on your head. And I hope that what you're feeling, and this is just my hope, you feel whatever you want to feel, but what I hope that you're feeling is a little bit dumb. And by dumb what I mean is you're beginning to look at all this garbage that you've been focused on, and all this nonsense that you've been thinking about, and all this stuff that you're putting in your body, and all this stuff that you're putting in your psyche, your spirit, and your soul, and just seeing how, how incongruent to the process that we're talking about here that is. It's incongruent. And what we'll talk about next is the consequences of not getting this down in more depth, because that's gonna put a fire under you. But what I wanna just focus on right now in this next exercise is nailing down those core areas that I had you write down I want you to nail these down. I want you to go into your group, just nail it down as far as what you want your life to look like and beginning that process of what it's gonna to take to actually get there. And again, don't feel unhappy now and you only feel happy when you get all those things that you want. Feel happy now and joyfully move towards the goal. Don't come from a space of feeling miserable and moving towards the goal, I'll tell you why. That in and of itself becomes its own addiction and then even if you were to get the success that you want to build, you'd be so addicted to negativity and I'll be happy when that you will self-sabotage. So you also want to begin to resonate at a happiness level of prosperity and expansion as if you're already there now. Don't rely on feeling crappy as a motivator. It's a good low level mo motivator. It's not something that's gonna get you to the finish line though. It's kind of more of like an ignition motivator, right? So we'll talk about motivations next and I will include that in it, but it's, it's sort of like an ignition type of motivator, not a long-term motivator, okay? So get in your groups right now, get focused, get locked in, start talking specifics and get this in your head and we'll be back with more soon. Let's go. I hope that you just enjoyed this preview on the topic of endless motivation. And what I'd encourage you to do right now is click the link below and actually jump right into the course. The course is gonna completely revitalize your life and gonna show you exactly what it is that you need to do. We're gonna be going very, very deep within the course. Click that link, I'll see you inside. Let's go.